Welcome to another exciting episode of The Trading Bell. Today on the program, we shall be speaking to Caroline Karoga, the Chief Executive Officer of the Kenya Private Sector Alliance, the body that is very keen on ensuring that the business landscape is harmonized as well as ensuring that small businesses have a voice in the economy. Caroline Karoga will be joining us from her home in the light of the coronavirus pandemic where we're trying to keep a social distance. But first, let's take a look at her profile. Carol Karuga has a wealth of experience in leadership, having worked for Barclays Bank of Kenya, Nairobi Chapel, and the Sagamo Institute for Public Policy Research, Indianapolis, Indiana, where she acted as a liaison between the Kenya Private Sector Alliance, KEPSA, and the Institute before formally joining KEPSA. She worked for several years at KEPSA before being appointed the CEO. KEPSA is the apex body of the private sector in the country. Ms. Karuga holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Economics and Sociology from the University of Nairobi and a Master's degree in Public Administration and International Affairs from the Bowling Green State University, Ohio, USA. She has also pursued several professional courses on public-private sector dialogue, global leadership and private sector development, among others. She currently serves in several boards, including serving as the board chair for the Special Economic Zones Authority Kenya and as a board member for the East African Cables PLC Kenya, Internet Solutions Kenya, Business Advocacy Fund Danish Embassy in Kenya, among others. Ms. Karuga has been recognized through several awards for her leadership both globally and locally. To name a few, most recently she was named one of the top 100 women CEOs in Africa by Reset Global People, that is in 2019. In 2017, she received the Global Female Leadership Impact Award and induction into the Global Women Leaders Hall of Fame by the Center for Economic and Leadership Development. And in 2012, she received the Moran of the Burning Spear 2012 and Heads of State Commendation 2011 by then-President Mwai Kibaki. Such a pleasure to have you on the show, Carol. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be on the show too. I clearly see we are keeping the so social distance and uh, how has the going been so far for you? Uh, it's been very interesting. Okay, working from home, I think this is uh, the new normal for all of us. Mm -hmm. And um, it's good and bad in the sense that uh, you don't get to meet people and um, talk. We are social, and, uh, but, but we are managing. Um, on the other hand, it's been very, very busy for us as, as KEPSA because then we have to really, really engage on what's going on in the country. So, sure. yeah, it's been very busy. All right, we've seen uh, a number of interventions from the government where the president introduced some tax measures that are basically meant to cushion uh, the manufacturers and also to cushion the common man out there. We saw uh, a reduction of VAT, we saw a reduction of uh, the pay as you earn. Perhaps from where you sit, Caro, how effective will this be in terms of just uh, shielding and insulating the common man as well as the businesses? Thank you. Uh, they are good measures and uh, it's good to have them. I think we're very excited. At least that journey has begun because uh, we're not the only one. If you look around the world, every country is trying to think about some economic stimulus, both for business and for the people, just to cushion them in this, in this season. Um, we are waiting for most of them to be implemented. Some of them have to go through parliament. And so we can't wait for parliament to meet in this uh, time of social distance. I'm sure they'll figure out a way like we are all doing, maybe through Zoom, and, uh, and just pass some of that. Um, we know they've also been anxious to see that um, there's cushioning of the business and cushioning of the people. So we know parliament will not be uh, having a problem to pass those, uh, some of those stimulus. But I, th I think um, we are looking and saying beyond that, what else can we do? Because that was a starting point, yeah. but it's yeah. not the end. And, and this is a long journey. All right. And uh, very interesting points you're raising there, Caro, that uh, these measures will uh, insulate the common monainchi. Perhaps uh, mm. talk to us of the impact this uh, pandemic has had to businesses that you talk to, because KEPSA is the umbrella body for all the businesses in the country. Just share with us how hard have we been hit as a country? Uh, it's been difficult. I think um, there are sectors, and I, I, could, uh, I could mention that uh, there are two, we have two types of the sectors. 
most of the sectors hit are non-essential manufacturers, tourism, the airlines, uh, logistic companies, uh, most comp any, organ any sector that is not in the essential list has actually been hit. The ones that we're seeing that uh, will actually continue to grow or to continue to survive in this season are uh, manufacturers who are producing the PPEs, the health essentials. We are also seeing agriculture because people have to eat and not only for ourselves, but we're also seeing uh, a lot of demand even from Europe and Middle East of our fresh produce. So that's good. Our fly industry, of course, has taken a hit. Uh, even though they are looking at uh, different models, we've started seeing a bit of online sales go up, which is a good thing, uh, but, um, but at just only about 40%, but it's good, at least that's continuing. The other sector that I think will continue to grow is the ICT sector. As you can see, what we are doing right now, we are using okay. ICT. That's true. Yes, so those are some of the sectors that I think will, co will continue to thrive a bit in, the, in this season. Um, but also manufacturing, what we're seeing with a lot of manufacturing is um, they, are they are being innovative. So you see manufacturers who are doing certain products now moving maybe to health essentials in this season to produce. We've seen that with the EABLs in other countries like General Motors and others. So I think that it's just a time for innovation. I think the world will just look very differently. And maybe some of these uh, companies may never go back to their original uh, way of doing things or what they were pro or producing before. Um, the other sector that is actually going to grow is the e-commerce, because then in the time of social distance, all of us want to sit at home and order for a meal or order for your vegetables and, 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 other, pro and other products. So again, those are some of the sectors that will not be as heat, but every other sector is feeling the heat. Interesting. And uh, Caro, of course, uh, mm -hmm. I like the fact that you are also exuding a, bit, a, a lot of optimism, saying that uh, the, there are sectors that are actually doing well. It's not all gloom and doom. And uh, I just want to pick your mind, Caro, especially uh, we're seeing companies are also doing this uh, work from home initiative. At the same time, some companies might have to go the very unfortunate route where they might have to downsize their staff. Um, from the businesses that uh, are under CAPSA, uh, what is the conversation mm -hmm. like? Are we likely to see uh, layoffs coming in? Are we likely to see uh, mm -hmm. organizations considering different models of perhaps asking employees mm -hmm. to go on unpaid leave? Because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. uh, I remember CS Mutahi Kagwe said, it is time for employers to also give back because these are the, the loyal employees who have been working for you. And right now we have mm -hmm. this temporary issue that uh, is expected to subside eventually. But are we likely to see mass layoffs like what you've seen in other countries? Uh, we are hoping not. Um, it's still early days for us, but um, employers are really doing their best to keep as many employees work on leave schedules and paid leave or at least half pay, uh, where really the sectors are really hit. Even real, I forgot to mention real estate is another one that is actually feeling the heat. Um, and so... I think what uh, employers are saying, let's work together with government. Uh, we're going to do our best to keep as many employees as possible, if not all, but uh, cushion us. Help. It's not business as usual. Uh, don't do your budgeting the way you've always done it. You know, redo your budget. And I think uh, we've seen the tax bill that has gone to parliament, which we have quite a bit of issues with, uh, because I think it hasn't uh, taken um, in consideration what is really happening in the country and the world right now. So we've made some proposals and we hope the members of parliament will be looking at those proposals and really uh, using that and, check and looking at the environment and suggesting that uh, we need to really uh, focus on what's happening in the environment. So um, yes, as you heard the CS um, Tahi saying that a private sector is doing its best. We've not seen the massive layoffs um, that we've seen in other countries and we are hoping not to get there as we work together. So it's a time to, for all of us to give back. Everyone is feeling the pain. Um, I think the other sectors that are going to be hit is the SMEs, you know, because they, they, they don't have a lot of cushioning. And so what we are doing with government is discuss what more measures beyond what was given in the stimulus package can the SMEs be given, um, can have. Uh, some of our SMEs, when we talk about SMEs in Kenya, it's a very different picture. In other countries, when we talk about SMEs, they are for, most of them are formalized. But uh, we categorize ourselves in three, in three sectors in this country. We have the corporates, and then, uh, which are the big corporates, uh, which is the medium and large. Then we have the small ones, which we call the SMEs. And then we have the informal sector. 
And out of that, uh, of the 22 million jobs that you see, 2 million come from the formal sector, 20 million come from the informal sector. So when we're talking about cushioning, yeah, it's a big, it's, we have to rethink our model. We can't do what other countries are doing because we have a very big chunk of the informal sector. So what do we need to do for them to make sure that they're operating? And that's why you can see, even as other countries have gone for total lockdowns and all that, uh, we've, uh, the country and the government here has toured with the idea of not going for total lockdown because what do you do with the 20 million people? Already many, some of them who owned uh, bars or salons or barber shops or little restaurants, they're at home. How many more can you send home? That's very, very uh, loaded statement, Carol. And uh, let's talk about uh, some of the initiatives. Of course, uh, there's an emergency fund that uh, the president also did constitute a team that will be driving this. Uh, we also have uh, the Ministry of Trade and uh, Industrialization and Enterprise uh, saying that uh, they're working towards giving SMEs uh, some sense of relief. Talk to us about this emergency mm -hmm. fund and how will it work? How much are we looking at? We've seen corporates coming in to donate some funds towards this particular fund. Just walk us through the impact this fund will have and how will it be distributed? Good question. I think we are all at the beginning of that. We actually had a meeting yesterday, again through Zoom, with the Ministry of uh, Trade and Industry, and we we're talking about uh, our focus is jobs and saying how do we retain jobs in the three categories of the big corporates, of the SMEs that are formalized, and then the informal sector. And uh, one of the discussions we had around the SMEs is, um, yes, we need to create a fund that can be lent to them, but how do we do this fund? And so part of the work that I'm doing this afternoon with McKinsey and others is to figure that out. You know, what will that fund look like? Where is it best uh, situated so that they can access? Again, because if you start telling the informal sector, go to the banks, that won't happen. You know, so we have to figure out a system that they can access and then do we make it available for everyone at the same amounts? You know, all that is what we're going to try and figure out and what that means. Yeah, so it's, it's work in progress, but we hope to figure it out in the, in the near future. Uh, there's a big challenge when you come to supply chains. And uh, of course, mm -hmm. Kenya being a net importer of quite a number of products from different countries, SMEs are very, very vulnerable and they are really exposed. And uh, Carol, mm -hmm. I'm just keen to hear from you, perhaps how, how soon should we have the framework ready? And uh, perhaps um, are you looking at uh, doing a staggered approach towards the disbursement of funds? Um, yes, um, I think let, let's separate. There's what the COVID fund, the emergency response board that was set by the president, what they're doing. They have a, uh, a major, I think they released what they'll be focusing on in on Monday, the chair by uh, Jane Karuku, and yes. they're working on that. So I think that one of the areas is livelihood. So we'll see how that uh, connects with what we are doing at uh, with the Ministry of Enterprise, with yeah. the uh, trade and industry. And, uh, but we are going ahead and saying, what are some of the measures that we can put now to cushion the SMEs and looking at that where they have the formal and informal. But let me also say that um, I think uh, what part of what was done in, when, in, our, in our advocacy with the president about three weeks ago now, I think two, yeah, about three weeks ago, was um, in on the textile industry where we asked for that the EPZs because right now the market out there is very low if they can offload 100% to the local market. And of course, we're getting less imports even on the Mitumba and how we can connect all that because we have a lot of SMEs in the Mitumba, but we also have small traders and uh, even retail, retail shops that could actually start selling our EPZs. You know? And so that's work in progress. I think a lot of things um, have, have, uh, have moved. And so we'll, see, we'll start seeing what that, that means. So that's part of what business will be doing. So yes, that was a policy decision that we needed to uh, pass. But then now it's the mechanism of now saying, how do you offload the, the apparel um, to, to the local market? And also we'll be looking at other sectors and saying, how do other EPZs that do other things that um, are for export, how can we start offloading into the local market? And also looking at all the opportunities. Because the other thing we're seeing as business, let's use this crisis to look for opportunities for our own manufacturers. There's a lot that we've imported in the past because we were not competitive. 
you know, cheap imports in the country. Can we start producing that where we have a hard idle capacity? How can we also link with the EAC? So what I'm also doing with my counterparts in the EAC region is starting to look at opportunities together that we can do, you know, so that we, we, are, we are again grow the EAC market that we are starting to lose to, to cheap imports. Amazing. And uh, I like the fact that you've brought in the element of ESC because Kenya does not uh, operate in isolation. Uh, of course, we have, we have very strong trading partners in the names of Uganda, Tanzania. Uh, you also have uh, markets in Congo, I mean, Burundi, South Sudan. Mm -hmm. All these are countries that we are working closely with. Perhaps uh, from your counterparts, what is the feeling like when you talk to them? How are they coping with this issue? Uh, it's been interesting. I think uh, we moved ahead as Kenya, and uh, it's because we, I think the private sector and government here, we have a good relationship. So we work closely uh, in, in good times and in bad times. So with my counterparts, they've, they've been trying to figure out how to engage government. So we've been sharing our experiences of the last six weeks and how, because we started about six weeks ago, when we realized this thing is going to come here anyway and it's starting to move south. So how do we start preparing? So we started about six weeks to really just start preparing and engaging government. Um, so we've been sharing those lessons with our counterparts. Some of the countries, of course, like Uganda and Rwanda have gone on complete lockdown. So what does that mean for business? Tanzania is still, everything is just operating as normal. Uh, Burundi hasn't figured it out. So it's a very interesting time, but we, we're just saying, what are the like apparel can we do together with Tanzania? They have a big apparel sector. How can we work together and produce for the region, produce for Africa? It's also a time that we can, we can fast track the ACFTA, you know, because everyone is looking inward right now in the world. How yes. do we you know we can start producing for ourselves, but also produce for the, for the, for the, for the, for the continent. And so that's what, we, those are the discussions we are having, even as uh, everyone tries to engage at a local level. Interesting. So what I'm gathering from you, Caro, is this is the time to seize the opportunity for Kenya, especially in value addition. Many times mm -hmm. we are we're importing so many things that we can actually do locally. Yeah, exactly. And, and uh, I, like, mm -hmm. I like the fact that you've really said that uh, this is an area that as Kepsa you continue to champion. And um, what do you see in the horizon, especially provided that this pandemic has also shown us that we can rise above uh, relying on imports and we can actually get goods from our region and make them here in Kenya. How will this impact the cost of goods in the future? How will this impact how companies uh, will operate moving forward? I think the, the, what, that, what, that's what has, the crisis has done. It's made us realize that we do have a lot of capacity here. And even when I say about uh, new business lines that, uh, that we are looking at, they're not only the big corporates, the SMEs. We've seen a lot of SMEs come into the, uh, to start making masks, to start looking at um, other, other, other health essentials, sanitizers and all that. So I think yeah. we're going to see that, certain, so what, I, what I'm seeing, the picture I'm seeing going forward is that, yes, there's some businesses that will die, but we'll have a new generation of, 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 of businesses that will arise. And then there are those who will innovate and renovate themselves to survive through the crisis. So you're going to see three types of businesses coming. You know, those who will die and maybe will come many, many, many months later or many years later, they will arise again as different businesses or the same businesses. But there are those who are going to change now and uh, become producers of something totally different. And then there are new businesses that are going to arise. So that's, that's where, and, and for me, I think where I'm, I want to even put more of my energy going forward from next week is what, what a new Kenya will look like. You know, as these businesses change, what environment will we have created for them? So that's what I, I'll, I'll want to start engaging on, even with government, to say what environment can we create for this new Kenya that will emerge. All right. And Caro, as we wrap up, uh, you're always very good with numbers than myself. Um, you, you released a couple of reports uh, a few weeks ago. Perhaps uh, what, what is your focus? Because the central bank says uh, the economy might not hit the target of 6% as they had envisioned. Of course, uh, we are not alone in this. Other countries will also be affected in Eastern Central Africa. But as Kepsa, what do the numbers look like, especially import, exports? Very interesting question. Um, we're still running some models. Maybe you'd give me uh, until end of this month. 
because also how we manage the health side of the crisis will determine a lot how the economics go. And so we're going to be issuing another survey just first to look at uh, what one month later, after we did the last survey, one month and a half later, how does the environment look like in the business and in the economics and how are the imports exports looking? You know, so what I can say for sure from uh, on the export import side is um, the, the, car, the cargo flights. Yes. We're seeing lots of cargo flights uh, living with fresh produce, but there's less of imports coming in. Okay. And so we are, mad, we are even discussing what does the costings look like? Because then do they double the cost because of the cargo that, that uh, for the empty flights that are freights that are coming in? And so I think we're going to start seeing a different model. And so it's our time and an opportunity for us to really, really push for, our ex for exports so that we, we become an import substitution country where we're producing much more and then and exporting much more than we are importing so that we can turn the, those tides in, in a lot of the countries that we've worked with before. But the other thing that I would like to mention, you're seeing some, um, for a long time, China is, has been the producer of the world. A lot of uh, industries, whether it's Japan, US, whoever, have based their industries in China. And some are saying, uh, maybe this wasn't a good idea to have all our industries in one country. So can we diversify? So what for me is interesting is to say, are we ready to start getting some of those industries here? Can we work on our special economic zones to be so ready so that as countries start looking at relocating some of their, their companies, they, we, they can find a fertile ground and a place that they can locate them. So those are some of the things that we are looking at. And so the numbers may look a bit different. So give us a little time. We may give you a bit of uh, different numbers and also how we manage the health side of the crisis. All right. And uh, Kara, what would be your parting shot, um, especially to investors who are still monitoring the situation, asking themselves, should we be still going strong in Kenya? Should we not? Investors who have shares at the Nairobi Securities Exchange, what would be your message to them? Um, I think for me to tell them, do not shy off from investing. A new Kenya will emerge, and it's those who will have gone ahead that will remain ahead. So for me, just to encourage them, please invest in the country. And you don't invest when things are good. You actually invest when things are bad. Because when the tide turns good, you'll make better, uh, better returns. All right. That's a powerful statement to close our interview with. And I hope uh, out of this uh, pandemic, you'll be getting out with the skill. Myself, I hope out of this pandemic, I'll become a better cook. <laughs> I don't know about you. <laughs> yes. Exactly. I think we all have, we'll have all better skills by the time we leave here. I think a lot of the older generation will be better IT users. Kabisa. <laughs> All right. Thank yeah. you, Caro. Yeah. Such a pleasure having you. And uh, we look thank forward you. to engaging with you in the near future. Okay. Thank you and have a good day. Well, we've been speaking there to Carol Karoga, the CEO of Kepsa, just uh, giving us perspectives in regard to how the economy is performing, what should investors anticipate. And uh, of course, she sounds very, very bullish that things will pick up and uh, everything will bounce back eventually. But for now, the focus really is about import substitution. How can we as a country uh, drive the agenda by value addition and seizing the opportunities that present themselves to us here as a country? Well, that's why we wrap it up on our show this afternoon. And we definitely look forward to engaging with you using our social media platforms. And of course, remember to keep safe, stay safe and wash your hands regularly. And of course, let's continue being positive.